Have you heard the tragedy of Darth Echan the Idol? It's an old saber legend. Welcome back, nerds. Fino here. The Bedazzled Grill concert has arrived, formerly known as Grail Live, and with it comes FGO's first and to date only welfare foreigner. It's Mysterious Idol X Alter. But can Echan stick the landing in her career change, or does free come with a steep cost? Let's find out. Echan's most important characteristic is her class. Foreigners are very peculiar units that have class advantage against Berserkers, Pretenders, and other foreigners, while having disadvantage against Alter Egos. Now you might be wondering what's so impressive about having advantage against Zerks, which is something anyone except Mash can brag about, but the important part isn't offensive class advantage. No, foreigners have defensive class advantage against Berserkers, and they are the only class with this property. Their offensive advantage against Pretenders is also unique, so having one in your arsenal is a very good idea. They'll warn you not to expect a magic bullet. Taking half damage from Berserkers is nice, but it won't save you if, say, Arjuna crits you for 20,000. So Echan will need to bring a little more to the table and with that in mind, let's turn to her skills. First up is Unparalleled Waltz. It provides a quick and buster buff with each lasting for 3 hits. It's also a single hit evade. You generally want foreigners for boss battles more than farming, and having hit based buffs is a bit of a bummer for that purpose. Limits your upper end performance. The upside is that at 5 turns, the cooldown of this is short. Might be worth playing around the evasion timing instead of the offensive buffs though. Class advantage or no, eating a raw NP is bad for your health. Echon's second skill is Infinite Upstream Lyrics. Single turn crit buff with a 3 turn special damage modifier against mechanical enemies. Now the mechanical thing is a really strange effect and not the most useful niche to specialize into. You do have a handful of mechanical berserkers like Lu Bu, Fran, Zhang Yu, and Galatea, but aside from Zhang Yu, these don't really feature in major high difficulty fights. Moreover, a third of the mechanical support pool consists of alter egos, who actually have class advantage against foreigners. Mechanical standard enemies are a bit more common, thankfully, but Echon's farming ability is questionable due to her lack of a battery and NP gain modifiers, so maybe keep her in your back pocket for 90++ nodes where she'd be responsible for a single wave? I don't know. The upside is that at 4 turns, the cooldown on this is quite short to make up for its lackluster effect. Because it's up so often, you just need to worry about your star absorption, which you can augment with command codes. Miss Majin is a good generalist pick that comes with crit damage. The one bearing fortune works on crit cards, and Kaval the second works on buster cards while giving a little bit of crit. Rounding on Echan's standard skills is King's Singing Voice. It's a typical party attack buff, just with a 2k heal. Very straightforward, and with a 5 turn cooldown, you have high uptime at least. Now let's take a look at her noble phantasm, Lumino Caliber. It's an AoE quick attack that deals additional damage to evil aligned enemies, and it also comes with a preemptive quick buff tied to overcharge. Evil is a fairly wide net to cast, so you shouldn't have any problem finding valid targets. That said, the overlap between evil and mechanical servants is extremely small, consisting of Summer BB and Lu Bu. Robot Lu Bu, of course, not Horse Lu Bu. And Shock of Shocks, regular BB is technically good aligned, so there you go. But yeah, if you need Lu Bu super dead for whatever reason, give Echon a call. Looking under the hood, Lumino Caliber has a hit count of 4, which is on the low side for a quick NP. Parvati has the same hit count, but the difference is that off-model Sakura has much better looping tools, a battery, small as it might be, and an NP gain steroid. Echon is neither, just two quick buffs. The one tied to her NP expires after a single turn, meaning you can't snowball off consecutive Lumino Calibers, even if you somehow get multiple going. If you want any chance of farming, you'll of course need a super scope, but that's no guarantee of success. And I think AoE foreigners are stuck in a weird spot because a lot of the need for foreigners is in the single target department, which is why Mysterious Heroine Double X is in such high demand despite having a relatively simple kit. And as far as rhyming is concerned, any class can farm berserkers. All that matters is their ability to generate charge. That's why the extra class invoked for doing this is the Avenger. In fact, if you have Castoria and you're looking for someone to farm berserkers, you'd be far better off placing your hopes in Mysterious Ranmaru X, who's coming in this year's Guda Guda event, or rolling on Summer Kama, who I have a guide on. But Echan does have her perks. She has access to one of the few good anti-class appends with anti-berserker damage. However, what Echan giveth, she taketh away. Grail Concert is, if memory serves, the last event before servant coins become obtainable in event shops. Between this and the lack of a rerun, you'll have to rely on bond levels to unlock coins. And you can only get so many this way, so if you want to overgrail Echan, you'll have hard choices to make. There is kind of a silver lining though. Recently, the Japanese server introduced a system called Evocation that lets players unlock old welfare servants and get the materials to max them out. Echan is unfortunately not in the first wave, but assuming crossover servants aren't specifically excluded, there's a good chance you'll be able to unlock all of her appends in the future. Wait, crossover? That's right, Grail Concert is technically a collaboration with a rhythm game called Fate Grand Order Waltz in the Moonlight Lost Room. This is weird on a number of levels. First of all, it's Fate collaborating with itself, but we're used to that. Secondly, Waltz in the Moonlight Lost Room never got released over here. It was JP exclusive, same boat as the Fate Requiem novel. But it gets stranger. Waltz 
is a dead game. Not because the player base dried up, but because it was deliberately made to be downloadable by only a limited number of people for a limited number of time, and then shut down a little while later. All this despite the fact that it would have worked just fine as an offline, single-player game. This fascination with self-destructing novelty games. I don't know if it came from Delightworks back in the day or if Type Moon was pushing for it, but I'd really wish they'd cut that shit out. This goes well beyond using FOMO as a marketing tool and enters the territory of salting the earth. But back to the game you can play, Echon has a number of passives that give her stars per turn, buster damage, and debuff resistance. But she also has a secret, undocumented ability. Mysterious Idol X has a very high chance to instantly kill any recording of her Noble Phantasm's audio. That's right, Echon has evolved into DMC Echon, and if you try and put Lumino Caliber up on YouTube, you'll get a nasty surprise. With this, she joins the two Shikis on the list of servants that can attack you in real life. But if you're content to let Echon take all the spotlight, there are some tricks you can do to get the most out of her. She has a lot of her stat line tied up in health, which is unfortunate for her damage potential, but it does mean that she can take hits reasonably well. You can lean into this by using a craft essence like Child of Atlas in fights where your target tanks up with defense buffs. In that situation, and assuming you're stuck trading face cards, the downside of a mixed stat line matters a lot less. For general offensive applications, you're better off with something like Traces of Christmas's Past for its cocktail of relevant buffs. There are also hybrid CEs. My preferred pick for Echon is Warlord's Rivalry, but it's an old gacha CE. Free-to-play masters can go over something like Bestia del Sol instead. It was a freebie from Saber Wars 2. Less useful is Echon's Bond CE, which gives your party special damage against mechanical and evil enemies. As with most Bond CEs, the terrible stat line makes it a questionable choice for a main attacker. For your supports, I recommend giving them Fragment of 2030. Echon has no star absorption tools outside of command codes, so if you want to crit on the regular, you'll want a passive source of stars to improve your odds. And speaking of which, Echon can look forward to a pretty substantial indirect buff in the future. Ruler Scotty incorporates a lot more buster support than her caster counterpart, and between Echon's crit steroid and 2 quick 2 buster deck, our aspiring idol has a loadout to take advantage of these tools. Summer Scotty's battery comes with both a star dump and a buster absorption effect, meaning you can come swinging right out of the gate if you draw a good enough hand. She grants stars per turn, an attack and hybrid buster quick buff, and another quick buff that also amps buster crit damage. Moreover, the presence of a second Scotty lets you run the triple Scotty system and partake of the forbidden fruit that is Echon farming. There's not necessarily a ton of value in that last bit, but the option is there. That said, Ruler Scotty does have one particular deficiency relative to her caster self. She has zero protection outside of defensive class advantage, so if you run a frontline of two Ruler Scotties and Mysterious Idol Exalter, you'll have exactly one single hit evade between all of them. This is going to cause you problems in boss fights where you have to parry noble phantasms, so plan accordingly. Mysterious Idol X Alter is in a weird place. She's a bit like Mecha Ellie in that her value is put overwhelmingly in her class. But unlike Mecha Ellie, who's specialized for single target encounters, Echon is stuck with a more wishy washy kit. She's an AoE attacker but lacks the tools to be an efficient farmer. Moreover, AoE Foreigner is just too narrow of a niche to justify the relative weakness of the servants in it. And that problem won't really be rectified until Kukul Khan comes along in Lost Belt 7 with her massively overloaded kit. Until then, the strong foreigners are the ones that can dish out single target damage like MHXX with her Noble Phantasm and Van Gogh with her crits. Echon does have some face card tools, and in this regard, she works as a beat stick of last resort. Better to have a foreigner than no foreigner. But adding to the woes of being in an excessively narrow niche as an AoE foreigner, Echon specializes in fighting mechanical enemies. The anti-evil buff covers a lot of ground, but this? You'll end up leaving a fair bit of damage on the table. Between this and her hit-based card buff, I think I can safely say she's undertuned but free is free. Level her up while you have the event bonus, but don't go crazy with her skills until you find something where you really need her. Stay tuned for more Grail concert coverage, and if you want to glimpse deeper into the void of AoE foreigners, I have a video on Voyager, who plays the trail that Echon is walking on. Apparently, the guy's a real gamer, absolutely allergic to personal hygiene. But that said, like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me at twitch.tv slash Tyson, where I stream every weekend, 3 p.m. Pacific time. This weekend, I'll be rolling for Miss Crane, so stop on by to see if my luck holds up. See you there.